So if the government is everywhere, uh, have you ever heard somebody say something to the effect of, oh, I don't want to get involved in politics? I've said that a lot in the past. I, I really don't want anything to do with it. But the unfortunate fact is every single aspect of our lives from the moment we're born, actually from before we're born, every aspect of our entire existence is affected by government. Everything. We have to have a birth certificate. We have to have a social insurance number. We have to have a driver's license. We have to have a death certificate, a marriage certificate. Some of which certain classes of people weren't allowed to have or have been given by accident. For instance, the guy that had to prove, I, I met him a few months ago, he had to prove that he wasn't dead because they, he got issued a, a death certificate. So he went to the registries, he said, well, I got their certificate, but I'm not dead. And you know what they said to him? Well, the government requires proof. Can you believe that? He had to go get a doctor's note to prove that he wasn't dead. Which makes me wonder if some of these folks making these rules and laws should be getting uh, a, a note proving they're not brain dead. So politics affects and influences every aspect of our life. Uh, there's literally like nothing we can do that the government doesn't watch over us or interfere, or at the very worst, actually just tell us we can't do it, even though it's all right. So I am 100% guilty of being a, I don't want to get involved in politics kind of guy. I have a, 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 I had a really great career in the oil patch. And as a matter of fact, I get to go do some rig work next week, which is going to be fun. And I was kind of in a position where I was comfortable. Uh, I never went hungry, as you can tell. I drove new vehicles all the time. I had, I could buy what I wanted. I could go on vacation and, and things were great. So that comfort put me in a place where I just didn't really care that the government was being dirty, sneaky bastards. Pardon my French. I knew that things were going on that weren't right. I knew that there was this push towards a, an, an ideology that says human beings are evil and they need to be removed from the planet. We've seen it coming for what, 20, 30 years, right? My entire adult life, my entire voting life, I've heard things from some of these groups that lobby the government that basically say human beings are bad and we should be gone. Everything's our fault. So we've known this forever and we didn't get involved. How many people in this room only just started getting involved and paying attention really to what's going on and wanted to make a difference? Don't be, don't be shy. I'm one of those people as well. So I'm going to ask you, now this is going to be difficult because there's lots of people. I'll ask you a question, and if somebody has something to say, just shout it out. Why did you get involved now? You have the time. We're fed up. Your kids, your grandchildren. COVID. How many people in this room are still living a fairly comfortable life and are secure and really don't have to worry about much. There's a few of you. Why are you here? I would suggest, because you care about Alberta, you care about other people. That's your grandkids. That's what this is about. This is about people. It's not about politics. It's not about, it's actually not about COVID. It's not about uh, the global elite. This is about people getting back to a place where regardless if something is affecting them or not, they're actually getting out there and getting involved because they see what's happening around them. They see their neighbor losing their business because the government says you can't serve your customers anymore because COVID. They see uh, the, maybe their neighbors with trucking companies no longer able to make their payments because costs have risen so drastically Labor is in such short supply, they just can't provide the services and earn the revenue anymore. And this is extremely encouraging because most of the time what we see is people getting involved because something has affected them personally. I'm one of those people. I got involved because I was affected personally. And my involvement was, was in the very beginning for like the first three days was I'm not going to listen to the government because they're going to destroy my business, my family, I'll lose my home, I'll lose my investment, I'll lose everything I work for because the government is doing something they're not allowed to do. That's why I stood up. 
within a few days, people were coming to my restaurant from all over the country and sharing their stories. So this very, very quickly changed from a me thing to a, wow, this is a people thing. Very quick. And in doing so, it actually made me feel quite ashamed that, I, that these things had been happening for years and I hadn't got involved because I was too comfortable in my own life. But that's kind of human nature. We have tunnel vision. We, we worry about our own bubble and our own family first, right? That's how we are. It's nothing to be ashamed of. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, I think everybody in this room should be encouraged that there are those who actually aren't affected by this that are getting involved now. There are some people in this province with more money than I could even count. I think they probably weigh their money. Um, you know, they, they lose a million dollars and they don't, it's, it's like me losing my, my change in the couch cushions. And they're sticking their necks out. They're standing up and they're writing some checks and they're saying, we got to stop this. Because they also see what's going on around them. They see other people being affected and they want to stop it. And maybe some of them have children or grandchildren and they don't want them to, to, to own nothing and be happy and, and, and be, uh, their adult lives be barbecuing cricket burgers in the backyard. But people are getting involved. And I did say this right from the beginning. This is not about the government. This is not about politics. This is about people doing what we're supposed to do, which is, which is stick together, stand with each other. We're stronger together. We're supposed to be, human beings are a very community-minded animal. Most of us. I mean, some people just don't like people. And some animals don't like people either. But for the most part, we're kind of like a herd animal, are we not? We like to be around other people. It's fun to, to open up your backyard to your neighbors and bring them over and barbecue and have a couple beers and share your stories. Those community-minded uh, things are kind of what makes us different. And so now, through all of this, through the, the business closures and, and the vax passports and the job losses because people didn't want to take the jab, we see communities rebuilding. And sometimes it's a little bit slow, yes, I'll give you that. Uh, we're, we're, still, we're still slaves to our, our human nature, which is we want to you know, go out and do things and have fun and, and not really worry about stuff when it's great. Make hay when the sun shines, and the sun's been shining a lot in Alberta over the last few months. So you know, we're golfing and camp. Some people are, I'm not. Golfing and camping and vacationing and going to the lake and things like that. And and enjoying the summer that we didn't have for two years. But there's still people filling rooms like this everywhere I go, all across the province. They're not as full as they used to be because of golf. But this is encouraging. It's encouraging that people are actually taking the time to do this. It's encouraging that you're here. And is there anybody in this room who is still questioning whether or not we actually have a problem that we have to fight? So we're all on the same page that we have some serious problems within society, within our government, all across the world, and we need to do something about it, correct? So you don't need to be convinced of that. You don't need to be convinced that we have to get out from underneath the, the tyranny of the federal government. I mean, that's very, it's blatantly obvious. And when you come to one of these Alberta Prosperity Project events, um, it just really, it really motivates you to, to do something. But what is the something? I think everybody in this room probably is here because they're looking for a solution. Now, I haven't said this before, but I know what the solution is. I know where the solution lies. It came to me this morning as I was brushing my teeth. Do you know what the solution is? I don't know. <laughs> my phone is listening figuratively. Tomorrow morning, when you wake up and you shake off your morning fog and you go to the bathroom and you brush your teeth and you're looking in the mirror, you're going to find the solution. It's staring at you with a frothy toothpaste mouth. You are the solution. You've always been the solution. None of the politicians are the solution. They're slaves. Oh, what do you mean they're slaves? They're slaves to the polls. They're going to do 
what they think they have to do to get reelected. If you don't believe me, just listen to some of the things they're saying. You're the solution. Your voices are the most powerful thing in this province. Your individual interactions with your friends and your neighbors are more effective and more powerful than any of us standing up on this stage and, and, and speaking to you. The relationships that you have with those around you and the trust you build with them, that, that gives you an opportunity to reach people on a level that we just can't up here. I mean, we can give you information and ideas and things like that, but at the end of the day, the solution is with each one of you bringing this message to your friends and your family. And it's not a message of anger or, or hate or anything like that. It's a message of hope and compassion that we see something's wrong. These people are being harmed. People are being killed. They are actually dying. What's the leading cause of death last year in Alberta? Unknown. Now, you cannot tell me that for two and a half years, every single death that happened, they knew why that person died, did they not? We heard about it every day. It was all over the news. It was crammed at us from every angle, radio, social media, television, everything. They, they, they told you they knew what the problem was and how to fix it. And all of a sudden this year, they're telling you, oh, well, this is unexplained. We have no idea, but don't worry. Well, I'm worried. I'm very worried that we have people like that in charge of policy and, and making laws and regulations and, and things like that in our province. And it's time to put an end to it. So we know what the problem is. We know what the solution is. So where do we take that? What do we do with that? Any ideas? I'll give you some of my ideas. One great idea is bring people with you to these events. Bring a couple friends. Tell them there's snacks because I guarantee you, if they're anything like me, they will come. It doesn't matter what the meeting's about. They'll be here for the snacks. But they're going to learn something. Another way to do it is if we know that some of these seats are empty because people are out at the lake or they're golfing or they're fishing or whatever, go with them. Invite them over. Pardon? Or, well, they're working, yes, that too. Do things in groups in your own communities. Build those relationships back that we've lost in the last two and a half years, especially, and get this message out everywhere you go. That's what's going to make a difference. That's what's going to turn the tide. I mean, it's already happening. We're, we're hearing some politicians and some influencers and some leaders they're using some of the verbiage that we use on this stage. They're saying some of the same things that we are, suggesting, hinting towards Alberta needs to get independent and out of the tyranny of the federal government. They're not coming out right and saying it. But do you know why they're, they're speaking the way they are? Because the parade is growing. And they're trying to get in front of it. Now, granted... They are trying to steer the parade in a different direction because we still haven't grown to the, to the number we need to give them the courage they need to actually stand up and say something. Do you know what's gonna happen when, when the Alberta Prosperity Project reaches you know, a threshold of say 20,000 members, 25,000 members? You know what's gonna happen? All of a sudden, some of these MLAs, some of these politicians, some of these people that failed us over the last two and a half years, all of a sudden, they're, am I allowed to see balls? Are gonna grow five sizes. They're gonna get some courage. And the, and the concerns they had that they didn't raise before for fear of getting kicked out of caucus or fear of losing their jobs or looking like uh, um, a conspiracy theorist, they're gonna speak up. Now, in my experience, when one person stands up and, and speaks the truth and does the right thing, other people follow. Okay. I didn't know that was a clapping thing. So when we build this, and I say when, not if, because we will. When we build this to that threshold that gives these men and women some confidence and some courage and some cojones, 
one of them is going to stand up and speak out and they're going to say, you know what? We heard from Dr. Modry and Dr. Hoggetson and Dr. Alexander and, and Dr. McCullough like months and months and months ago. They sounded the alarm and we were too scared to say anything, but we're going to say something now. And then it's going to be like dominoes because the truth will always come out. I mean, we're, we're seeing the truth come out. Unfortunately, we're seeing it in statistics right now because hindsight is 2020, right? But that's, that's, that's kind of what's, what's happening here. And every time I go on social media or even take a phone call from somebody of influence, I hear more and more truth coming out. It's not going to be hidden for very long. But when, it, when, when this all... When this all, I, I shouldn't say blow up, but I'm going to. When this all blows up, we're going we're gonna to have some choices to make. Are we going to crucify and condemn those who were scared to stand up for us? Or are we going to be compassionate and understanding that they're human beings, they're fallible, they're not perfect, and, and, and accept their apologies? We have a choice to make, and it's a very difficult one, especially if you've been affected to the point where you've lost a loved one over this. It's going to be tough. And the reason I bring that up is because when, when we talk about solutions, solutions don't always turn out the way we imagine they will. Everything happens for a reason, and, and it happens the way it's supposed to. But how many times in our lives have we, have we thought, you know what, this really isn't what we expected? Um, why did it happen this way? But it's for a reason. Anyway, the solution lies with each and every one of you in this room. It doesn't lie with me. It doesn't lie with Dr. Modry or, or, or anyone else. It's always been about the people. Everything that's happened over the last two years was done to the people, and the solution has always been with them. The, the one thing that's kept us from rising up and, and fixing these things before it got to the point it is right now, it was fear, right? I was scared in the beginning. I'm sure most of you were. Uh, maybe some people are still a little bit fearful, and I don't blame you. When you get this stuff shoved down your throat every single day, and you're told to be fearful, you're told, told to be fearful of your neighbors, you're told to be fearful of a certain class of, of society who chose differently with their bodies than you, when, when you're... When you're told to be fearful enough, it becomes the truth and you fear. But we got to rise up against that, or, or we got to rise up away from that. Especially the fear of, of looking like an outsider because we want to say the truth. That's a big fear people have right now. I mean, you put the truth on Facebook and immediately the fact checkers are right on you, telling you that you're a bad person and a conspiracy theorist and you're harming the world because. You know, you don't say what they want you to say. And when it comes to back to politics, when it comes back to politics, we have to shed that fear that's been instilled on us by these politicians that tells us if we don't support them or do what they say, set our principles and our ethics and morals aside and, and follow them, that something bad will happen. We got to see right through that. And that's the entire point of the Alberta Prosperity Project, something outside of the political world that gives you folks, that gives everybody the courage and the informa information and the resources they need to not only see through what, what the politicians are telling us, but to make informed decisions based on principle and morals. That's what this is about. And that's why this is different than anything that's ever been done before. It's always been about supporting a party or a, or a candidate, right? Because of their platform. And how many times have we gone to the ballot box thinking, I really don't want to vote for this guy, but, you know, he said this one thing I like. I'm not satisfied with that anymore. I want to create a parade outside of politics so that those people whose names are on that ballot do what we want them to do. That's how we change them. And it's working. It really is. But we need to build this bigger. 
if we're if it's working at 80, where are we at, Dennis, for memberships? If it's working with with over 8,000, 8,200 members, imagine what's going to happen when we build this to 25 or 50 or 100,000 or 135. Now, no pressure or anything, but this is kind of like, I, I hope you feel the weight of this on your shoulders because this isn't just a, a me or an APP thing. This is all about all of us. And the work that we do and the time we put in over the next few months before May of next year is going to be the deciding factor on the path this province takes. It's going to be the deciding factor on what those who want to be our lawmakers put on the table for us to, to vote for. So no pressure or anything. Anyway, uh, it's not all doom and gloom because part of this, like I said before, is doing fun things with your neighbors. Have some barbecues, uh, invite them over for dinner, take your, you know, take your elderly neighbors fishing or something like that and have individual conversations with them and get them at least thinking about this. Because the more people we have spreading this message, the faster this grows and the better chance we have at making sure that that little girl and that really awesome dude in the Batman t-shirt aren't eating crickets when they're my age, even though I'm not that much older. <laughs> Am I out of time? Okay, shameless plug here. If you're looking for something fun to do tomorrow with like-minded individuals, I think there's something going, going on in Mir, Alberta. Does anybody know what it is? Yes, we're having our first bull riding event at the Whistle Stop Cafe in Mir, Alberta, and we're doing it tomorrow. And it's going to be absolutely awesome. So if you can make it out, please do so. We have a pancake breakfast. We have Cowboy Church. We have bull riding. We got some live music, which may or may not include Tamara Leach's band. I don't know. And I might be playing with her, so that's great. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just going to have a great day establishing relationships with like-minded or maybe not individuals. Thank you very much. Thank you.